some stuff came up that I just didn't think was gonna come up and I hadn't even thought about it. Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is going to be an exam week vlog. So it's Monday today and I've got an exam today. I've got um, professional conduct and then on Friday I've got real estate. Um, so I thought, you know, it's going to be quite a hectic week. I've got to got, get lots of revision done because I'm not as far ahead as I usually am um, when it comes to revision. So I've got quite a bit to do. And I thought I would take you guys on the journey with me and show you how I get exam ready. Okay, so it's 11 o'clock. I'm going to go to the station now and make my way into Moorgate because that's the campus that I go to and my exam's at 2 p.m. on campus. And yeah, so let's go. I thought I'd show you what I'm going to take. So I'm going to take my SRA codes of conduct um, and my legal foundations book, which is all tabbed up. And I've also got one little folder with some notes in that I made um, from workshops. So these are all of my notes. And it's a, for those who don't know, it's a 30 question multiple choice exam and we get two hours. I'm going to take my laptop in as well so I can print out my things and a hole punch because I'm going to put my notes that I print out for real estate and dispute resolution in this folder after I, um, after I finish the exam. I just got back from uni it's about half past six now and that exam was really difficult <laughs> I don't know if any of you guys watching sat that exam the professional conduct exam but it was actually really tough I kind of underestimated the preparation required because I did some of the sign up questions so sign up is a multiple choice test um, platform that the University of Law has and they say that you know the the test and feedback and sign up are really good revision tools so I've been using those I even started doing them last year like I've been I've been preparing with sign up for ages the real questions were always so much harder than the ones on sign up so yeah I mean I had to use my textbook pretty much for every single question sometimes to look up the answer but um, I would say mostly just double checking because I wasn't 100% sure um, about some of the answers because they were just worded in such a tricky way where the answers are just so like nuanced. There was always a couple where I thought, okay, those are definitely wrong. But then there'd be a couple where I'd think, oh, I'm not sure which one it is between these two. And it sometimes would boil down to like one or two words which meant the difference between one being right and one being wrong. So yeah, that was tough. So I'm a little bit worried now about real estate on Friday because I feel like I've kind of breezed through the other exams and haven't found them difficult at all. And today I struggled a little bit with the exam and I'm thinking, oh gosh, what if I've, under what if I've underestimated real estate and dispute resolution? So. I'm just making dinner now and then I'm going to start revising for probably real estate seeing as though I've got the exam on Friday and then yeah that's about it. So let me know if you also sat that exam and how you found it. Um, in terms of preparation for anybody who's watching this who's got professional conduct coming up I would say um, probably go over the reading that you've been asked to do for the workshops, professional conduct one, professional conduct two, make sure your legal foundations textbook is tabbed up. So get, you know, tab every single paragraph almost, no, not quite, but t make sure you tab every single topic and every subtopic and so that you can find what you need really quickly in the exam because some stuff came up that I just didn't think was gonna come up and I hadn't even thought about it but I'd, it sort of rang bells from reading that I'd done and a lot of it was highlighted in the textbook. So I had I had read it once, um, but I didn't really open my textbook to revise. I simply used sign up and I just don't think this is good enough. So yeah, my biggest advice would be to go back through the textbook, read all the chapters again, highlight everything, tab everything. There's a couple of handouts that they give you for um, regulated activities and 
exceptions i think it's the three two eight exception i can't remember what number it is but make sure you've got the flow charts that you law give you um and make sure you understand how to use them because that sort of thing comes up where you've got to where you get given scenarios and you have to work out which one it is um so yeah make sure you know your way around those um flow charts and then obviously practice the test and feedback because that gave me a really good solid base understanding of what I needed to know. It gave me a good place to start because I knew what area to look in and I knew where to look for it in the textbook. It wasn't like I was completely blank. I had a general idea of what the answer was, but because the questions are so nuanced, I had to really go to the textbook and really delve into the details of um, of the rules. So yeah, I hope that helps. If you've got any questions about conduct, please let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer the questions. But yeah, that's about it for today. Um, I'm going to, like I said before, do some revision now and I'll take you with me for the rest of the week just to show you how all the other exams go and how I prepare. But uh, I don't know if I'm going to film any more today because I'm absolutely shattered. Good morning. It's Tuesday today and it's seven o'clock in the morning. I was revising dispute resolution till quite late last night, till about 11 o'clock. Um, so I've got up a little bit later than normal. Usually I get up about half five, which I don't ask. <laughs> um, I'm just cooking some porridge now. I'm gonna eat that. And then I might do one more lecture for dispute resolution because I just wanna get through the whole course once before I move on to really focusing on real estate in um in preparation for the exam on friday i don't know whether that's a good idea or whether i should just just be focusing on real estate but i do feel like i just want to get get through disputes once and i've only got a few classes left so i've got three days until real estate and then after real estate i've got three days until um disputes so this is the most rushed that i've felt ever usually i mean I feel like I've kind of breezed through the other exams because I've had so much time to prepare for them or I felt really ready, you know. But for these, it's because we've got so many in a short period of time, it's just one after the other after the other and I just don't feel like we've had that much time to prepare for them. So anyway, um, I will just eat my breakfast now and then crack on with some work. Good morning, it's six o'clock in the morning and the day is, where are we? Monday, it's Monday today and the dispute resolution exam is tomorrow. It's the final exam, well actually it's not because we've got drafting afterwards. To be honest, it's just been such a stressful period but I thought I would just jump on here and show you what I've been doing um, for the past couple of days to get ready for dispute resolution. So I will show you that now. So, okay, here is here are my books and folders that I'm going to be taking into the exam. This one is my civil litigation textbook and I've got all the pages tabbed. And I've, they've got some really good, um, really good templates at the back which, I'll be honest, I mean I've read them because I've highlighted them but I just don't remember seeing them before. So um, I've, I really highly advise like tabbing those because I do have exemplars in my folder but um, these are just really good and, and yeah, anyway, that's that. And then my amazing folder where I have, I actually found this um, slideshow thing yesterday which I thought was really good. It's got um, previous questions, like exam style questions in there and then an example of a bad answer and an example of a good answer. So I had a look at that, I thought that was really good. Um, and then in relation to my notes, I've got my condensed notes here and I really like these dividers because they're, they come out further than normal which means that I can put these tiny little plastic tabs in here and it doesn't make my folder look messy. Um, you can only see these mini tabs once you go into the section. So I really like those. This is my new way of organising my folder. Um, and I really like it so um, yeah so yeah I've got like some precedent exemplars there so if we get asked to draft a certain type of letter then I can just go to that and be like okay this is a style 
um, and there's like CPR rules which govern the format and content of certain types of letters so in my condensed notes I've got all the information about what needs to go in the letter so I kind of like put those together and then um, and then just go for it so yeah that's what I've been doing and today we get our advanced reading which um, is released at 9 30 and what that means is we just get given all the documents that we'll need to have in the exam because they don't expect us to read pages and pages and pages it's so time pressured in the exam there just wouldn't be time to get to grips with the facts of this fictional case that they want us to answer questions on so um, they give us all that in advance and the really good thing about that is you can do a little bit of prep in advance you can kind of think okay what sort of questions might come off the back of this um, and then you can kind of create some template documents that you might want to take into the exam that's what I did for real estate and that worked really really well so I will I'll go into more detail about that at the end of the video um, but yeah I'm going to get on with doing some multiple choice questions now and I'm going to um, yeah just kind of get on with that for a couple of hours until the advanced reading comes out good morning it's the day of the dispute resolution exam and i woke up at half five just to do some more mcqs um there's so many for this module and some of them some of the classes have like 12 mcqs per per class so i had a lot to get through And it is, where are we? April. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while since I finished the vlog and since I had the exams, it's been a few weeks and I keep meaning to just, I haven't had time basically to sit down and just tell you how I found the exams. Um, I'm not gonna talk about professional conduct because I've already spoken about that early in the video, but I wanted to tell you how I found real estate and how I found dispute resolution. Real estate, I was expecting it to be a really difficult exam and I was expecting to struggle with it, but actually, um, and, th and th the reason for that is that I just think there's a lot of topics. They go over quite a lot of ground in the course and I was expecting to, I, f I just didn't feel confident in all of the topics, but um, I think the more I went over it, I managed to go over it so many times um, before the exam I'd say at like three, I'd say probably three or four times I was able to kind of go over each workshop, not in huge amounts of detail, but I think repetition for me anyway is quite a useful way to revise. And so um, in the actual exam, I, I loved all the questions and I felt pretty confident with my answers. So I'm really hoping that that's going to reflect in the grade. Um, dispute resolution. So I thought I was going to find that easier than real estate, but I actually found it harder and not necessarily the content. I didn't find the content hard. What I struggled with a little bit was the wording of the questions. Um, now there was actually a question which was incorrectly worded and that was an error from the University of Law. And um, I really think that I probably lost marks a little bit on that because I was kind of skirting around. I won't go into detail about what was wrong in the exam paper but there was an error and it meant that I spent quite a long time like trying to work out what the question was actually asking me and I think that meant that I kind of rushed the, the last questions um not rushed but I felt like I had to rush to make up for the the fact that I spent a bit longer on the previous question Actually, I ended up finishing the paper five minutes early, which is just really strange because I, I n I've never done that before. But I wasn't sure sometimes what the questions were asking me. I wasn't, I think they were quite vague. So I wasn't sure how much detail they wanted us to go into. And generally you can get a good idea of that from the marking scheme. Like you can see, oh, this is a 12 mark question. So they want, must want X amount of detail. Or this is a five marker. They probably don't want much detail. Um, but yeah, I just found the, that the exam paper was a little vague and I think in hindsight, if I was approaching it again, I maybe would have the structure of how to answer questions as given in the slides by our 
um, tutors and maybe would have had them at the beginning of each topic so that I could go to that because I'm not sure that I had them like right at, at, the, top, at the tip of my fingers, I don't know if that's what I'm saying, but um, I wish I had them right to hand because I had quite big folders with a lot of documents and you can see and when you're, especially when you're trying to go quickly, it's sometimes quite hard to navigate between a lot of documents. I do remember getting into a bit of a flap in one of the exams because I literally just had paper on top of each other. I took them out of the ring binder. This is another thing, the tables are so small. And so I, I had my book there, my folder there, and I took the paper out to try and make it easier so I could like look at it a bit more close closer and then ended up shuffling the papers up. So. So the lighting has probably just changed because my battery died and I had to um, charge it and now it's getting dark outside. So what was I saying? The exam, yeah, so the questions for the dispute resolution exam were quite vague. So I wasn't always immediately sure how to approach answering. And we do get given like templates for how to answer questions, like specific, specific questions they might say, talk about the test then talk about some other criteria, then apply it to the facts, that sort of thing. Um, and most of the time that's what I did, but I think sometimes I just wasn't 100% sure whether I was answering the question correctly. And I don't really know if I can give you any advice about how to approach that, but maybe just be be aware that you the questions might be vague. So definitely have some sort of template for how you would approach a question, like a checklist ready to hand because you're probably going to need it. And then another thing that I really wanted to say, you get pre-reading, which is given to you um, a day before the exam. And that's such a good tool because you can have a read through it. You can really get to know the facts of the question that they're going to ask you. And it's not the entire question. You'll get the facts for the majority of the questions in the paper. And you might be able to predict the questions that are going to come up. I managed to predict two questions for the real estate paper and one question for the dispute resolution paper. But they were decent marks. Like, I probably guessed about 40 marks from the real estate um, paper and maybe 15 marks from the dispute resolution paper. If you look at the documents carefully and you can think about, oh, what could they ask from this? Then you might be able to save yourself a lot of time and a lot of stress going into the exam knowing that you already have like a good basis for how you're going to answer the questions. So yeah, that's my advice for that. Yeah, if I was, gi if I was giving advice to myself this time a month ago about how, how to approach the exams, I would just say, don't worry, nothing was surprising. Nothing really caught me off guard. Everything was expected. And by expected, I mean, everything was quite similar to what we did in the workshop. Of course, there were different facts. And it, of course, it wasn't the same, but it was very similar. So if you've got the skills to answer the workshop questions, you will have the skills to answer the actual questions. So yeah, in summary, that would be go over the pre-reading and try and predict questions and create templates and or checklists for how to answer those specific types of questions that you know are going to come up because because you can really maximize your marks that way um, and then secondly go through all the workshop tasks as many times as you can make sure you know how to answer them and that you've got really good notes for how to answer them and that's more or less it my battery's about to die so i'm going to end it there but i'll see you in the next one goodbye